This is question five on the 2016 to 17 introduction to mechanical and electrical engineering exam. Uh, it's about stress and strain and a little bit of material science as well. Um, so 5a says there's a weight of 1000 kilograms to be supported by a steel cable in tension. That's 1000 kilograms it's fixed there uh, and this cable here is made of steel. Um, I can also just make a note weight equals mass times gravity. We'll use gravity equals 10. It says that in the question. So the weight is 1000 times 10 which equals 10,000 newtons or 10 kilonewtons if you prefer. Uh, we are also told the tensile yield strength of steel is 250 megapascals. I call that sigma y. Sigma is a stress or a strength, um, and y for yield, and that is 250 megapascals. You're told that the safety factor equals 2, so the maximum allowable stress. equals 125 megapascals. There's quite a lot of information in the question and what we want to know is uh, the diameter of the wire. Um, okay so we're aiming for a stress of 125 megapascals. To do this we need to know the definitions of well, in this question, the definition of stress, sigma, the stress equals force over area, and therefore um, we want to calculate an area because that will get us towards a diameter. Area is going to be F over sigma, which equals 10,000 divided by 125 times 10 to the 6, noting that we're targeting this stress of 125 megapascals here. Uh, okay, uh, now I can put that into my calculator. 10,000 divided by 125 times 10 to the 6 is 8 times 10 to the minus 5. And because this unit was in newtons and this unit was in pascals in the end this uh, we've, we've used SI equivalents or SI derived units throughout so this is going to be in square meters um, we also know then that the area is pi r squared which equals 8 times 10 to the minus 5 as before and that means that r equals 8 times 10 to the minus 5 divided by pi all square rooted um, so if I divide that by pi and square root that, I get 5.046 times 10 to the minus 3 meters, that's about 5 millimeters. And then one step that it's quite easy to forget, we were actually asked in the question for a diameter, um, not a radius. So we just want to convert that into a diameter by doubling it. Diameter is two times radius. And that comes out as 0 0.01009 meters. And I'm going to call that 10.1 uh, millimeters. But if you leave it in meters, I think that's also acceptable. It's probably best to round it to three significant figures, whatever you do. And that's the final answer. So that's the diameter of that cable. OK, uh, B, part B says the cable is two meters long. Calculate the extension of the cable due to the load. Assume the Young's modulus E equals 210 gigapascals. Again, you'll have to know your prefixes to know that's 210 times 10 to the 9 pascals. And uh, we've got that the length equals 2 meters. And what we want to know is the extension of the cable. Well, the extension of the cable, it's just worth remembering a couple of definitions here. Strain is the extension 
or the change in length, a different name for the change in length, divided by the original length. And therefore, delta x is going to be strain times original length. We don't know the strain yet, but what we also know is um, sigma equals e epsilon. And that means um, epsilon equals sigma divided by e stress divided by Young's modulus gives us strain. Remember always uh, sigma here is stress, epsilon here is strain, and capital E here is Young's modulus. Um, so I can substitute this in here and I'll get delta x equals sigma x divided by e and that equals um, sigma is 125 megapascals 125 times 10 to the 6 times the origin x is the original length 2 divided by e the Young's modulus which is 210 times 10 to the 9 Uh, 125 times 10 to the 6 times 2 divided by 210 times 10 to the 9 is 1.19 times 10 to the minus 3 meters, which is about 1.2 millimeters. Either of those will do fine as an answer there. Um, and so that is the final answer to part B. Uh, part C says, if the safety factor is increased to 2.5, what diameter of wire will be needed? Um, if the safety factor equals 2.5 and the yield strength sigma y is still 250 megapascals, then that means we want to be targeting something which is a factor of 2.5 less than 250 megapascals. We want to be in a position where we can be 2.5 times out and still only just reaching the yield stress. So that means sigma, um, just for now I'll call it SF 2.5, equals the original yield strength 250 megapascals divided by the safety factor which equals 100 megapascals. Um, now we just do the same process as before and we know A equals F over sigma equals 10,000 over uh, 100 times 10 to the 6 which equals one times 10 to the minus four square meters. Um, and that is pi r squared, which means that r equals the square root of one times 10 to the minus four divided by pi. And a lot of this is now following the same kind of process as um, the answer in part a. So I'm doing it reasonably quickly. Uh, the square root of that is 5.64 times 10 to the minus 3. Yeah, 5.64 times 10 to the minus 3 um, meters and diameter equals 2r equals 0.011 uh, meters, which equals 11.3 millimeters. So we've increased our safety factor, which means we want everything to be a little bit stronger. So it makes sense that our diameter has gone up slightly. In part A, it was 10.1 millimeters. Now it's 11.3 millimeters. Uh, part D now says, explain the difference between a brittle material and a ductile material and draw a typical stress strain curve for each. Um, brittle materials uh, fail through crack propagation. 
That means when they break, they break because networks of cracks have connected up. Um, they are, that means that they're not ductile typically. Oh, sorry, that's in the question. Um, but what that means is they can't be uh, drawn into wires, for example. I should have read the question more carefully before putting that second bullet point in. Um, ductile materials, you, um, th there is uh, movement at the atomic or molecular level. which in turn allows the material to deform. Um, and if I just draw, um, let's do ductile first, draw the stress strain curves. Um, so this is strain and this is stress. Typically for a ductile material you have an elastic region, a yield point, and then after the yield point you have some behaviour which is no longer a straight line, and then failure here. So I'll mark those things on. That's an elastic region. And in the elastic region that's where stress and strain are related by Young's modulus. That's why this is a straight line. Once you go below, beyond the yield point um, at that point, the stress and strain are no longer related in a straight line relationship, so it becomes a more complicated behaviour. And once you go beyond the yield point, the material doesn't recover in the same way. Um, as long as you're in the elastic region, everything will return to its original state, whereas once you're in this region, which is called the plastic region, that's not true anymore. Um, and then this point here, I guess you could mark as failure. And if you wanted, you could note that this is the um, tensile strength. The, the stress related to that point is the tensile strength. It's the maximum stress which the material can sustain. So that's a ductile material. Um, and if I do the same for a brittle material, Um, again, there's an elastic region, and then pretty soon after the end of the elastic region, there's failure. You don't get this um, large strain with um, increasing and then decreasing stress in a brittle material. So that's the typical stress strain curves for both. The exact slopes of these two lines will depend on the material properties and everything else. Um, this you could still say is the elastic region. Um, there'll still be a relationship. Or, or the material will be well um, modelled by assuming a linear relationship between stress and strain. And then this point here is failure. And although I've said the slope of these two lines um, depends on the material properties, it is typically true that you'll see a lot more extension um, at failure in a ductile material than you will in a brittle material, and I've tried to reflect that on these two graphs. So the strain for failure in the ductile material is a lot further over to the right. So something like that is the kind of answer to part D. There are other things you could say. You could give an example of both. So brittle materials are things like glass, um, ceramics and ductile materials frequently um, metals are ductile. I'll put an EG because obviously this is just uh, um, examples of things. And metals can become brittle um, and some metals are brittle but um, for example copper is a ductile material which is easily drawn into wires. Um, and I'll write that as well just to
So that's the kind of idea of things that would be good to see if you're asked about the materials of brittle and ductile materials, material science. Uh, part E then, finally, um, part E says if the safety factor in part A is reduced below one, what would you expect to happen? Um, it's not even really worth writing this down. If the safety factor is reduced below one, um, then that means we are using a uh, stress in the cable which is higher than the tensile yield strength. If you remember here, we divided the um, tensile yield strength by the safety factor to get our working stress, the stress we're going to operate at. If the safety factor is less than one, this will be higher than the tensile yield stress. And so the, if the stress is higher than this point on the graph, the tensile strength, the material is necessarily going to break. Uh, we're beyond the maximum strength that can be sustained by that material. So the answer to part E is if the safety factor is reduced below one, you expect the material to break. And that is question five complete.